Welcome to Thank You for Your Service, Now What? I'm Francisco Oliva, and I'll be your host for the program today. I'm here with Mr. Derek Felton. He's with the Menlo Park Vet Center. We're gonna talk about awareness, and we're gonna talk about what's in it for me. And when, when I say that, there are so many things that, that are available to veterans. I had no idea as an individual, and you as an expert share with me, he's still learning about the things available. So can you just kind of touch at a high level some of the major benefits that veterans may be able to advantage themselves of? Absolutely, we've got, we're talking about educational benefits, we're talking about enrolling to the VA healthcare system, we're talking about access to the vet center services themselves, but I'm really excited about our subject matter experts and dialoguing with them. Great, thank you for that. We're gonna take a few minutes break and we're gonna come back and we'll talk to Mr. Norman Aliman, who is with the County Veterans Service Office. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Thank You For Your Service. I'd like to welcome our first guest, Mr. Norman Aliman, who's going to let us know about the role of the County Veterans Service Office. So Norman, can you tell us what the CVSO is and what is, the, what is your role there? Well, I can, and thank you first of all for allowing me to share some information with you. The County Veterans Services Office is instrumental for veterans and families in, in the county. We work collaboratively, collaboratively with the Department of California Veterans Affairs, otherwise known as CalVet. And we also work closely and collaboratively with the VA and the Veterans Benefits Administration. We have about 33,000 veterans here in the county, plus their dependents, and we try to connect them with services that they earn while, because of their service in our military. Mm -hmm. We try to connect individuals with benefits that they earn through their service, and not only them, but their dependents. Benefits can range from connecting them to non-service connected pensions, service connected pensions, VA health care. We do referrals to housing and shelters, and we also do some sort of a case management to make sure that they're doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a separate from the VA agencies, right? You're, you're, you're a county employee, in other words. That's correct. Okay, we are right. a county staff. We are county staff, but we work very closely with Mr. Derek Felton, who is the director of the Peninsula Vet Center mm -hmm. and other VA services and CalVet in the state. Okay. So, Norman, walk me through if a veteran walks into your office and they wanted to file a claim or maybe upload their DD-214, what's, what's that like? What's that process like? Sure, I can certainly do that, but I want to make sure that we realize that that's not all we do. For example, veterans who have lost all their military records, for whatever reason, we move a lot, uh, got burned or something, we can actually order these military records for them. So that's one of the things that we can do. So you mentioned your DD-214, but for example, any Injury, illness, or disease that was accrued during active military duty time can be compensable by the, for the, by the VA. For example, you break a bone and you no longer walk properly, and now it's affecting you. Right? That happened during active military duty time, the VA can compensate that. But not only through health care, but financially as well. Veterans come in, we sit down, Mm -hmm. private, confidential, we do a one-on-one, -on -one, just about the whole story. Tell us, tell us about your service, tell us about what happened, what did you do? And we work closely with the veteran to make sure they get maximum benefits that they earn through their service. Great. You know, I think we, we think about veterans, we think about, we don't include the extended family. We don't include those other people who mm. have been part and parcel of that veteran's, his challenges, his contributions. Um, can you talk a little about who other than the veterans actually can benefit from these programs? Oh, absolutely. It's not just the veteran that's entitled to some of these benefits, but their spouses, their children are maybe eligible for some of the benefits. For example, through the California Department of Veterans Affairs, CalVet, there is a college fee waiver for a dependent of a veteran who happens to be disabled, and it could be from a 0% to 100%, that child may be eligible to go to any UC, state, or junior college tuition free. Now that is a great savings for the family, for the student, and it's a benefit that they may be eligible for. Sure. 
I've heard you talk about the, in the past the actual financial contribution that the veterans making back into the actual the, the county itself based on taking advantage of some of these veterans. Can you talk about maybe statistically some of those things? Oh, absolutely. You know, we have about 33,000 veterans in the county. That's based on a 2014 needs assessment that the county conducted with the Human Services Agency, who I fall under. Mm -hmm. The County Veterans Services Office falls under the HSA. Just last year alone, the veterans that walked through our door and filed disability claims and non-service connected pensions, there were over $10 million that was awarded to the veterans using our office. Now that's a number to get excited Absolutely. about. That's money in that veteran's pocket and goes back into the, to the health and welfare of the county too. Absolutely. Did I tell you that that was tax free? Wow. That's impressive. Tax-free money, yeah. and not to mention the savings that they've gotten because using the college fee waiver. Great, great. So, Norman, you and I both serve together, and we're both working, uh, helping and giving back to veterans. What else should a veteran know about the CVSO office? I tell you what, the veterans should know that, one, that we are here for you. We are here for you and your family. You can come to visit our office. Everything we do is confidential. We have you from the very beginning and to the very end. We will make sure that we do our best service to get you the benefits that you're entitled to because of your service to our country. So Norman, tell me one thing that you could say to that veteran that's sitting home that has not registered for the service that will get him to come down to that office and see you and sign up? Well, there are a lot of different reasons why to do that. I'm gonna give you just a couple. Okay. First of all, we need every veteran to come down, regardless of income, regardless of socioeconomic status, every veteran counts. You are not taking a benefit from another veteran because of your income. Some of these benefits have absolutely nothing to do with income. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing, because we hear that a lot. Sure. We hear that, you know, I, I may take it from someone, and I appreciate the gesture, but the reality is we're doing a disservice by not accessing those benefits that we earn through our service. Sure. Second, that call us, visit us. Our main line, 650-802-6598, or you can visit us on our website, hsa.smc.gov. We are under the Human Services Agency, and we are here for you. We will do everything we can to make sure that you maximize the benefits. It is completely free and confidential. You know, we all hear about some of the challenges that the VA has had over the past few years. So in your experience, tell me how you see things improving. What have you seen, have you seen the needle move in terms of uh, turnarounds on, on assessment time, things that, do you have any statistics or anything you can share with us about that? Well, I tell you what, the VA has done marvelous work. Uh, I'm not only saying that because I'm a user of the healthcare system, but the reality is, is the VA has done tremendous work in order to maximize all its resources to make sure that the veterans are not waiting long uh, as they were be once before. We have seen claims turn around in about 90 days now. It really wow. depends. It really depends on what the disabilities are, how many are there in a claim, but we have literally seen claims come back in 90 days. That was, uh, that was that's not a typical claim but we do see claims come back in 180 for claims to go beyond a year. You know, that's, that's somewhat of a rarity nowadays because the VA has done extensive work in collaboration with the Department of California's Veterans Affairs. It's a, if you think about it, we're a team of three different mm -hmm. agencies. Mm -hmm. Every county but one in the state of California has an office, a CVSO office. Mm -hmm. And that one county is just because of geographical reasons. They get shared by the other county. So it's a team of three, eight different agencies. Not only is your CVSO working for you, CalVet is working for you, but the United States Department of Veterans Affairs is working for you. And that is to maximize the benefits that they earn from their service. Great. Briefly, is there anything we missed in our conversation that you want to share at the, here at the, at the very end? You know, I, again, I want to say thank you for the opportunity you've given sure. me. I want to make sure that every ver veteran out there, whether you're in San Mateo County, Marin, San Francisco, Alameda, Santa Clara, all our neighboring counties, go to your CVSO office, get connected with healthcare. 
If you're a combat veteran, there are special treatment facilities for you. The healthcare system at the VA, it is class. It is the number one system, the biggest system in the country. And I'm a user of it, and I vouch for it. Great. Thank you so much, Norman. I know after that, there are going to be people lined up at your doorstep. When we get back, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be speaking to Ms. Anna Coulter, who is an outreach specialist with the Palo Alto Healthcare System. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And we're here speaking to Ms. Anna Coulter. She's an outreach healthcare specialist with the Palo Alto Healthcare System. Ms. Anna, could you give us a little background on how you got into this business and you know, a little bit about some of your experiences since you've been involved with veterans? Sure. First of all, I would like to thank you for this opportunity of being here to discuss this information about our veterans who mean so much to this great country in which we live. I have been with VA, Palo Alto Healthcare System, 36 years plus. I am not a veteran myself. I have family members as veterans, combat veterans, and I also have a brother that's a Vietnam vet who served in this country in the United States Army. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us today. Anna, what's the process for some female or male to get enrolled in the VA healthcare system? There is different ways in which a veteran can enroll with VA for healthcare. They can register enrolled by telephone, by mail, and they can even come to the VA and enroll in person. And what we do when they come and enroll with us, we sit down, we tell them what they're uh, available for. We tell, we tell them about what has to be done to get enrolled if there is a um, copay for the services that they receive. Some veterans have to make a copay, mm -hmm. some of them do not. And that is determined by the priority group in which they fall into for their health care, and that's con that goes through their income for the previous year. Ms. Anna, Francisco and I, when we were doing this, we were talking about some of the resistance why veterans would not enroll into the VA health care system that's related to their income. And so you, you spoke a, bit, a little bit about it, but could you go back and, like, why wouldn't a veteran kind of enroll into the VA health care system? Some veterans feel as if when they enroll into the VA healthcare system, number one, they're taking the place of something that would belong to another veteran, mm -hmm. or I don't deserve, or I didn't get it hurt in combat. Well, what we let them know is, regardless to what the income threshold is, regardless of what their status was when they was in the military, please, ma'am, please, sir, get enrolled. This is something they have earned. And we do have veterans that's hesitant to provide us with that income information. But in the meantime, what we do is we sit down, we talk to them, and we try to encourage them to go ahead and get enrolled because this is something that they have earned. You know, Anna, uh, I spoke to some veterans who, who <coughs> believe they're ineligible because they work full time. Uh, and they're also uncomfortable providing some information, some of their private financials to the VA. Can you address some of their concerns? Sure. Some of their concerns is, why do I have to give it? When I went into the military, they never said anything to me about providing that information. But these are laws that has been handed down to the VA that we have to do. We have to guidelines that we have to go by. And once we sit down and talk with that veteran, whether male or female, and let them know what it's all about, show them in black and white what we have that has been presented to us, they are willing to provide that information and they, it makes them comfortable when we share that information with them. You know, in talking to a veteran, you have to understand what it is that a veteran has gone through sure. and what they're going through. And sometimes when they come to the VA, they don't want to give that information. But when you sit down, you make them comfortable. Mm -hmm. You let them know, we are here to support you. Yes. That's very important to them. 
I think that's, I mean, you hit on a great point there, of, of creating a trust and a bond with yes. with, with, a, with an agency that is perceived as big brother. And mm -hmm. your ability to, to make these folks comfortable and allow them to take that step that gets the, the, yes. the, the care that they actually is, is, is great. Is there a time limit when a veteran enrolls and say they don't use their VA health care benefits? Do they, are they still in the system or do they just fall off? If I say some years have gone by, how does that work? Once a veteran enrolls with VA for health care, they are grandfathered in for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And a good example is our combat veterans that we have coming back today. A lot of them are told, you don't have the health care, you don't need, and they'll tell you, I don't need the health care, I'm covered under my mother's health care, my dad's health care, my wife's health care. But what they don't realize is, once you come back, you get grandfathered in, you're in for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You have that ability to go to school, take advantage of that 9-11 GI Bill. And I encourage all of our veterans that's coming back today, please, ma'am, please, sir, get enrolled. You don't have to use it. Sure. But what it is, it puts you in that perspective of being in the system because down the road in life, mm -hmm. you don't know when you might need VA and your family will not be scrambling trying to find that DD-214. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. So if... I enroll into the VA healthcare system, and let's say I already have a private physician like Kaiser. Do I get these two agencies to talk to each other? Yes, they will talk to one another about the healthcare, and they will go in, if you're going to Kaiser and your medication is fifty dollars, and you can come to VA and get that same medication for nine dollars or eight dollars. Hmm. Which one would you choose? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Just makes sense. You know. Ms. Coulter, I mean, you've been at this a little while, and I was wondering if, if there's a, you know, a, maybe an anecdotal story you could share with us about one veteran that you've seen that has really been f positively affected by the healthcare mm -hmm. system. Sure. One, one, uh, one incident I would like to talk about is one day I had gone to a car wash over in Newark, California, and the truck in front of me was a truck that had PH on the license plate, PH veteran, Purple Heart veteran. Mm. This means this is someone that was served in the military, got hurt in combat, came back home, just wanted to know, let America know I'm a Purple Heart veteran. So me, I'm inquisitive, I'm talking to the veteran. We get around on the other side of the car wash while they're drying off cars and I always have an application in my car. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to this veteran. I said, sir, are you enrolled with VA for your health care? What is that? Mm. That let me know that this was a combat veteran. And I talked to him. And in about 15 minutes after talking to him, telling him what VA was, what he's eligible for, what VA can do for him and with him, I enrolled him with VA for his health care. He's getting his benefits through VA as I speak to you. That's fabulous. Because he's a Vietnam vet. And, I mean, you know, we've got 33,000 veterans here. Look at the opportunities they are for, for yes. folks we haven't touched yet. And, you know, opportunities for those folks to come in and get those benefits that you're talking about. Exactly. So, Ms. Coulter, if there was one thing that you could say to that veteran that's sitting home that's listening to us right now, what would you say to him about coming down and, and signing up for the service, how would you get him to come in that door? I would like to say to that veteran, thank you, first of all, for serving this great country in which you, we live. Thank you for allowing us to stay here in America and to sleep in the comfort of a bed at night. And I want to say, if you're not enrolled with VA for your health care, please, ma'am, Please, sir, go to your local VA, get enrolled for your health care. This is something you have earned. So on behalf of VA Palo Alto Healthcare System, to you, Francisco, to you, Derek, thank you for serving our country. Thank you, and may God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much.
Ms. Coulter's office contact info is 650-493-5000, extension 66266. Well, folks, that's it for today. I would like to say to all our fellow veterans and family members, thank you for your service. And keep in mind that if you served, you've earned. If you're a veteran or non-vet who knows a vet that should be taking advantage of the VA benefits, please encourage them to reach out to their local county veteran service agencies and get in the system. That's it, folks, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for your service.